In this next video I'd like to introduce you to iTree Streets. iTree Streets is an assessment tool which was developed by the U.S. Forest Services Center for Urban Forest Research led by Greg McPherson and his team out in Davis, California. This tool was originally called Stratum so you still may hear people refer to it as Stratum when it was introduced in 2006 and it was later changed to iTree Streets just for simplicity. As this tool's name implies, it was developed for assessing street trees, and it uses street tree inventory data to quantify the dollar value of annual ecosystem services and aesthetic benefits. So it provides information on energy conservation, air quality improvement, stormwater control, carbon sequestration and storage, and then it also has an aesthetic value component, and it provides estimates also for monetary values for those services and then it also provides some information on management needs and then there's an optional pest detection component which can be used in iTree Streets. Streets is a computer-based program which runs on a Windows operating system so this one does require that you do load software unlike the other desktop tools Canopy and Design which can run on a web browser and this allows any US community to collect and analyze street tree data and so this information which is generated in streets can be used to effectively or strategically manage the street tree resource to develop policies to help with prioritizing tasks and also for advocacy efforts. There are several different ways that streets can be used if the community has existing tree inventory information that can typically be reformatted and then imported into iTree streets. Streets also has two different options if you don't have information. So you can collect a complete tree inventory. So you're collecting all the data for all the streets, trees in the right of way, and entering that into the application. A community may not have the resources or time to do a complete inventory, and in those cases, you might decide to do a sample inventory. And a random sample will just entail generating random street segments and there's methods in the application to allow you to do that and then you would just collect data for the trees that exist on the right of way within those segments that would be entered into the application it would then extrapolate population estimates up with a standard error which is an accuracy of the estimate of that population Oftentimes when I talk to people about iTree Streets and if they are just a volunteer or local citizen, I tell them just to start out small and consider doing trees in their neighborhood. And that's one of the best ways to learn what's involved with setting up a project, collecting data, seeing what type of results can be obtained, and then sharing that information with others. And you can build up and scale from there. So that's a good way to consider starting from the bottom and then progressing forward. iTree Streets is predominantly used by city foresters, municipal arborists, regional urban forestry coordinators, and state coordinators. However, those are the folks who are often struggling to find time to use iTree Streets and they can benefit most by this type of data. So nonprofit organizations, volunteer organizations, schools, educators, fill a very important role in helping communities get this type of data and also urban forestry consultants. So there are a couple things to keep in mind with iTree Streets. It provides what we like to refer to as a snapshot in time of an urban forest resource or street tree resource I should say. So it is designed to look at a resource and what the benefits are providing today. It's not necessarily going to project things into the future like I tree design. It's not meant for doing a benefit assessment of park or forest trees. It's designed for street trees. It does not have the ability to track work history, generate work orders. It's not a it's not an asset management tool. There are different types of systems that people use that have all those types of functionality and then they occasionally will bring inventory from those systems into iTree Streets to get that ecosystem service information. And although iTree Streets does allow you now to collect GPS information, it does not have a streamlined compatibility link with GIS or other external systems. So typically if you're moving data from one system into Streets or back 
from streets into that system, there's going to be some reformatting issues that you're going to have to deal with. And since it is first and foremost an assessment tool, it has minimal flexibility in terms of adding new fields. So there may be information that you would like to collect, but streets doesn't have that type of capacity to build out the database to collect all the information that might be desired. So it's it's limited urban forest street assessment tool. So given some of these limitations, how might you use iTree Streets? And as I mentioned early, starting small is probably the best place to consider a pilot project. Your street, your neighborhood, see what can be achieved there and then build up from there. If a community has existing data, that certainly is something that would be worth approaching the community forester, public works official, and saying, hey, is this something I could help you with? And maybe you could even use some of that pilot project information to show what can be achieved for your community. Many communities are worried about the impact of emerald ash borer, so you might consider using iTree Streets to do a survey of ash trees, looking for signs and symptoms. That's something that it could certainly be used for. And the last three items just tie together. So the ability to demonstrate tree benefits and values, whether it's for planting or trees that were lost, that's just going to be helpful in terms of advocating for a community's tree program and being able to share and connect that information with decision makers and schools, educators will do wonders to help advance the way folks look at trees in your community. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the background information of the iTree Streets model. So Streets is a regional model and it uses research and data that are specific to 16 different climate zones to model the costs and benefits of street trees. So for the model to calculate tree related benefits for your city, it needs to know what are the species that are most likely to be found in a region, how big are those trees expected to grow, how quickly will they reach maturity, what type type of leaf surface will they have and so on. And then these factors can vary by location due to differences in growing conditions and also management practices, climates and soils. I'm not going to go into the details of the research behind iTree Streets, but there are community tree guides for each one of those 16 reference cities and we have those on our website. I have a link there and just an example of the Midwest Community Tree Guide. So that explains the methodology and the details of all the research that went into each one of those reference cities. And this map will just give you an idea of the location of those reference cities. So for the Midwest, it's Minneapolis. For the lower Midwest, it's Indianapolis. I use this graphic from the Wisconsin DNR in some of the previous videos and this came from information which was generated from iTree Streets by using existing inventory data and reformatting that and importing that into streets to generate this type of information and the DNR then use that information to design and conceive these really nice fact sheets to present that data to decision makers. And so if, if you are interested in going through that process, we do have some videos now that will walk you through a very stepwise progression of how to take existing data, whether it's 25, 50, or 16,000 trees, how to reformat that, create a streets project, import that in. And so the link's at the bottom, and they're not that long, and it's although it sounds like a lot, it's not that hard to do. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of how that might transpire, this is what a tree inventory looks like on a community GIS system. And this was provided from Brian Spencer, who's a city forester of the city of Oconomowoc. And so this has all the street tree information they use this to manage and keep track of their trees. And we can then take this type of information, export it out of their system, do some reformatting work, and then import that into iTree Streets. And that took a couple days to go through that progression. And so the city has a system that allows them to manage those assets, to track those assets, and then streets can provide this type of information to complement what they already have. So we now then can see what are some of those ecosystem services that those street trees are providing in terms of stormwater interception, air quality improvement, energy conservation, carbon and aesthetic values also, and then also a structural replacement value to that for that component. So it's information that complements the system that they already have in place, and this literally just took a couple days to achieve.
This is just an example showing what we can do once we have that information in iTree Streets. So I simply remove the ash trees from the database to show what might be the impacts of emerald ash borer. So on the left hand side we can see the benefits with the complete inventory and the impact of what we'll lose in terms of stormwater interception, air quality, energy conservation values, and so on. So losing 16% of our street trees is not just a percentage, but it also has an impact of some of those ecosystem services. So this type of information could be used to raise awareness or advocate for tree planting or tree protection if that's an option too. Many people consider iTree Streets primarily an advocacy tool, but it can be a very powerful and effective management tool this is one of my favorite reports, the Relative Age Distribution Report, which provides a snapshot of the current age structure and composition of the street tree resource, but it also lets you look at how that resource might look at in the future. And it's, it's a bit confusing when you look at it at first, but what you see at the bottom are the DBH classes here. And so to the right will be our larger trees. This green area is silver maple. And then we can see the top 10 species here listed on the right and the percentage. So this provides us a snapshot of the trees that are providing the most benefits oftentimes, which are larger stature trees like silver maple and what we might be replacing those trees with in the future. And in some cases, if they are smaller stature trees, we might unwittingly and unknowingly be planning for an urban forest that's going to provide the community with less ecosystem services. So this is a nice graphic that can be used to, say, advocate for larger tree planting areas or to find ways where you can use larger stature trees if you happen to be using more smaller trees and, and you're losing your larger stature trees. So when we look at our total annual benefits by tree species, we can see our silver maple is providing 20% of the benefits of the population. And you compare that with a smaller stature tree like crab apple, which is small in comparison, so you can kind of see the magnitude. And then also if you look at some of the other trees like ash, which you're going to be losing over time too. So this is information that could help with being more strategic in your planning to ensure that you're going to have an urban forest in the future that's going to provide at least the same amount of benefits for the community. One of the other advantages to iTree Streets is that you can look at information if you set up a project by zones so you can then compare different areas within your community to see where are the areas that are potentially in need of more trees. And that may be for a variety of reasons. Oftentimes in communities you might have an older neighborhood that's established and has most of the mature trees compared to newer subdivisions. But this type of information could let you be more strategic in your planning also. So I just wanted to quickly go over the project phases of streets if this is something that you may be interested in. And there is an iTree Streets manual which will walk you through each one of these phases in great detail. And this would entail deciding what type of inventory data you wanted to collect, scale of your study area, sample or complete, what are the different options that you have available for collecting data. You can certainly use paper with iTree Streets. You now have the option of collecting data on a smartphone or an iPad if it has internet connectivity. And there's, an all, there's also an older method using PDAs. And then this discusses the various different project parameters that go into setting up a project. So it's all about decision making. Phase two is about project creation. So this would be the work that would be completed typically on a desktop computer deciding what is that data that you want to collect, configuring a project for data collection and then setting that up to send to a device or so that it's ready for collection on paper. Phase three discusses the data collection component how to enter that in the mobile data collection option if you're using a smartphone or if you're using the PDA option, things to look out for to ensure quality between crews and so on. And then finally, the last phase is where you bring everything together, whether you're collecting data by paper and then manually entering or transferring that in from the PDA or uploading if it was used, if you were using the mobile data collection option dealing with any data issues that might need resolution or if there are things that have to be rechecked in the field, 
and you can then generate reports afterward. Here are a couple things to consider if you're interested in pursuing an iTree Streets project. Depending on the scale and scope of your project, transportation might be something that would need to be considered. Maps are very helpful if you're working with multiple data collection groups or different volunteers. Project leadership, somebody to coordinate where teams are working could help in terms of making the project more efficient, ensuring that there's no data collection overlap, and then also conducting quality assurance checks early and often to ensure that data collectors are identifying trees properly, documenting condition properly, or at least consistently among those different collectors. The expertise that's needed to do iTree Streets is very minimal. Typically, a day of training with streets with some additional support afterward is sufficient to get folks up and running. As always, having some knowledge of tree ID is very helpful. The typical equipment that's needed is diameter tapes for measuring trees. And then the devices. If you're not going to use paper, then you have to consider what other options such as smartphones, PDAs may be available. There are many communities who have used iTree Street successfully using volunteers and students to collect data. And this will just give you an idea of the time that it takes to do a sample project. And here again, this is just a sample project, but gives you an idea that it is something that is very achievable depending on the scope and the skill sets of those folks that you're working with. So it, it can be completed in a rather short amount of time, so it's something to consider. So hopefully this brief introduction to iTree Streets will give you some ideas of how you might be able to utilize the Streets application in your community.